welcome to Coffee with Craig. It is a fine Friday morning. Today we're going to talk about a topic that is probably going to get you just as riled up as, <laughs> as I am right now. It really kind of pisses me off when I read it. Now, I almost never read Salon.com except when they really write, write something really stupid and I get a chance to, to come across it, and in particular when they're talking about, you know, guns. Um, but in this particular case, uh, Salon actually wrote an article talking about, you know, the, the ways in which gun manufacturers and gun marketers are applying to the basis, most negative emotions or feelings or qualities of men. Now, keep in mind that, first of all, Salon.com is one of those, organiza- one of those left-wing organizations that really has an issue with manhood, with, you know, men being men. You know, they would rather men be, well, women with penises. That, that's kind of really their thing. That's what they would really rather us be. Uh, every, if you think about it, everything that is positive about being a man, uh, everything, that, everything, everything that is negative, everything that they deem to be negative, it, are, it generally tends to be male characteristics. Things like aggression, being aggressive, things like being competitive, uh, things like, uh, well, I don't know, violence, you know, now mind you, violence, blind violence, meaningless violence in and of itself. Yeah, that is bad. But you know what? Uh, violence with a purpose, you know, violence in defending oneself or one's family or one's community, uh, is not only, you know, is not only a good thing, but it is honorable and necessary. And, uh, and I say honorable because usually when you have to inflict violence in order to defend yourself, your family, or others, you're also putting yourself at risk. That is a base male thing. I mean, that is kind of a, kind of a, a base male tendency. But they went on and they went on to point out and talk about some of the things that they think that, uh, that uh, they use to appeal to men or that, that gun manufacturers use to appeal to men. Uh, top of their list had to do with sex. And they want to talk about how, you know, they use, how, how gun manufacturers or gun marketers use sex to market firearms uh, to men. Well, last I checked, the Hollywood left was, no, uh, was in no opposition to utilizing sex to market. Uh, all I need to do is look at, I don't know, hip-hop music, uh, look at most Hollywood movies, um, look at most commercials that are done by these liberal broadcast networks. Uh, let's see, there's, in California, we have this newspaper called the, the News and Review that actually pimps and peddles uh, sex and sexual content on, in, in their liberal rag. So I'm like, it sounds to me like a bit like the, the pot calling the kettle black. You know, Liberals have had more than their fair share of issues with sex. Oh, I'm sorry. Too soon? Yeah, see, you don't get to point out, since the fact that you are such avid supporter of Salon.com, you've been such an avid supporter of President Bill Clinton and such an avid supporter of, uh, of Harvey Weinstein, you really don't get to talk about who is using sex or who is ignoring, uh, you know, who's ignoring the use of sex uh, in our particular society, yeah, you you kind of lost your your moral authority on that particular on that particular topic. Now, the other thing that they like to point to, uh, had, the other thing that they like to point to has to do with, and, and I don't know where this actually thing is coming from, but they talk about the fetishi- fetishizing fetishizing. I think that's how you would say it of death, right? They're saying that, well, you know, they, these gun grabbers, they like to fetishize, fetishize death. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just going to pronounce it wrong probably. But, but what's interesting about it is every single time one of these shootings occurs, who is it that is quick? They, they don't even hesitate before they jump out and they are dancing, on the, dancing over the graves or dancing over the bodies of victims of these mass shootings in order to push a gun control agenda and gun control policy that they themselves admit would have done absolutely nothing to stop the most recent tragedy. Here in California, one of the biggest perpetrators of this is Lieutenant Governor uh, and gubernatorial candidate Gavin Newsom, who doesn't even wait two seconds before he sends out a tweet, before he sends out a tweet, once again, dancing over the graves of those who've lost their lives due to, due to some, of these, some, of these, uh, some of these events. So don't talk about fetishizing death. 
you guys are the ones who are who are looking to to to, to market. I don't know what it is. It's like some weird, some sort of a weird uh, pro gun or weird gun fetish that you guys seem to have when it comes. Uh, to the Second Amendment, you guys just seem to just you just can't seem to get out of your own way when it's when it comes to some of this stuff. Oh, unyielding patriotism—that's one that got me. In other words, they're saying, "Well, okay, so the first of all, yes, manufacturers and and those of us who advocate on behalf of the Second Amendment do appeal to patriotism." But you say that like. The fact that it's a base emotion, that it's a, a base quality of a man, you say that like it's a bad thing. Like being patriotic, like believing in America, like believing in our Constitution and our civil rights is a bad thing. You shouldn't believe in that. No, you should believe in special rights for special people. That's what you should believe in, right? Is that what you're trying to say? Are you trying to say that we should maybe be, I don't know, be following Russia? You saying maybe supporting other countries? Maybe waving the flag of other countries here in the United States? Maybe that's what we need to be doing? That doesn't sound like any man I want to be. And I don't think that sounds like, like any man that any real man would want to be. But hey, that's who you are. That's what you believe. I mean, you look at everything that takes place in this country and you try to find a way to twist it and turn it and make it negative. So clearly you must want people to be, to appeal to this sense of, oh, I don't know, uh, internationalism, giving over our rights and our control and everything, everything that we are to other nations, in particular to nations, well, I don't know, let's see, that are not as great as we are. And when I say not as great, hey, we have the highest standard of living of any country in the world. We are the freest people of any country in the world. I'm sorry. I don't believe that being patriotic is a bad thing. And I think you should really rethink whether or not you want to qualify it as a bad thing. You know, and then finally, you know, they talk about this connection to racism, right? Because, oh, all men, if you carry a gun, you are racist, right? You must be a white supremacist. I mean, heck, I carry a gun. Uh, I must be racist. Uh, I must be a white supremacist. Although I haven't been invited to any of the meetings, I don't know, clearly it's an oversight. <laughs> no, but seriously though, they think that because, and you just take for example, the, the, look at the two examples that we have right here, all right? Now, the, these are examples of items. One specifically deals with the, 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 the product Infidel, and the other one is Blue Lives Matter. So what they're saying is, is that because you believe in fighting terrorism, you are a racist. Because you believe in supporting law enforcement, right here, you are a racist. Because you don't believe what they believe, you must be racist. Because after all, being racist is a base male emotion. I think I've kind of made my point. Uh, this article, as, uh, as, our, as are most things at salon.com, is full of a bunch of crap. And, you know, I'm like this. I, I, I believe that a real man, now, and this is where I believe they are right. I believe that a real man understands and believes in fulfilling their responsibilities. They believe that they have a responsibility greater than themselves to provide for, to protect, to protect and defend themselves and their family and their community. They have that responsibility. We, as men, have that responsibility. And part of that is making sure that we're prepared to do so. And when the enemy comes, he is not going to come knocking at the door with, with flowers. When the enemy comes, they're going to come armed. They're going to come to do harm and damage to you, your family, and your community. If you are not prepared to fight force with force, if you are not prepared meaning you are not armed, then you are not prepared and you are not fulfilling your role as a man. Now, that's my opinion. That's just, just, that's just what I'm saying. You, for you, it may be different. But all I'm saying is, as far as this man, well, let's just say I'm going to make sure that I'm prepared. How about you? If you like our videos... 
follow, subscribe, like, and share.